Hello and welcome to another step-by-step -step how to tie tutorial video. This is what I'm calling the mailman. This is inspired by a friend of mine who is a postal worker and he ties a lot of uh, sea trout patterns and this is kind of an homage to him. So this is what I'm calling the mailman. This is tied on a size 4. This is a Moonlit ML057. It's a 1x strong, 3x long streamer hook. I am using an orange, hot orange, 210 denier uh, thread. I'm also using a black 140 denier flat wax thread. At the very end, at the butt, we have some medium oval tinsel. We'll be utilizing a crest feather. Some black ostrich. The body consists of a four strand black silk floss with a silver ribbing. This is a 13 one hundredths silver wire. Underneath we have a beard. I'm using a dyed uh, hen hackle. And up top our wing is none other than a squirrel tail. So let's go ahead and remove our sample and we can secure our blank hook in the vise, just like so. And we're going to start off using our orange thread. We're going to start off casting that up front. Trim off the tag end. And we're going to start off tying in our furthest rear material, which is our medium French tinsel. And I like to tie it in full length of the body because that gives us a nice consistent size and shape of the body. So we're just going to take our time running this all the way from the front to the rear. We're going to tie that in on the near side of the shank of the hook. And take that all the way into the bend, maybe to about the 10 o'clock position. Get our thread forward and out of the way. And let's come in and palmer on our French tinsel. Nice close touching wraps. We're only going to get about four or five of them in. So that's one full wrap, two, three, and popped off there just a little bit. There we go, that's three, four, and we'll do one more fifth wrap. Excellent, that'll be perfect. All right, we're gonna hold this up and out of the way. Get our thread back. And we can secure our tinsel down. All right, once that's secured at the rear, let's run our thread forward. And lay our tinsel down. Just a few locking wraps, that'll be fine. And for the most part, I have this laying down on the far side of the shank of the hook. We'll come back. Tie the rest of that in. We're going to spend a few minutes, a few moments here at the back end. We're going to just do a little hot spot. Just up the bend of the hook. As it transitions to the shank. And keep this 210 denier. That's what I like about it. It's nice and flat when you lay it out. 
spin your thread counterclockwise or anti-clockwise depending on your region. Here we go. Bring our thread forward and we'll secure that with a one, two, three whip finish. One, two, three. Here we go. And that just covered our assets at the back of the fly. All right, we're gonna transition to our black 140 denier thread now. Cast that on. And we're going to take that, and meet that with our orange thread at the back end. We're not gonna quite go all the way into it. Excellent, now let's grab our crest feather. Usually there's a secondary feather underneath. Go ahead and clear that out of the way. And strip off the down. All right, we want to tie this in so the feather has its natural curl. We want it to curl up. And we can take our tail and shorten it to length. Once we're satisfied with that, we're just going to wrap in the rest of this feather. Again, I'm going full length on this uh, shank of the hook. This will keep everything nice and even. All right, next we can take our black ostrich. I have two strands, two hurls. I'm gonna tie it in by the tips. that full length all the way to we meet our crest feather. Bump my thread forward a little bit. I'm just going to take a few wraps. I'm liking that. We'll go ahead and secure that down. And you guessed that we're gonna lay this down. And secure it up front. It's a lot of back and forth, but in my opinion, I think the end result is worth it. All right, next we'll tie in our wire for our ribbing. Once again, this is a 13 one hundredths fine silver wire. And for the wire, I like to tend to keep it on the near side of the hook. And I take that right to the tip of the tip of the hook. That's where I want the majority of the body to begin at the rear end. And we'll come in with our four-stranded silk floss. I'm gonna use the lift and lower like that and for the silk floss I'm gonna tend or trend to keep this on the top side of the shank of the hook Again, I'm just trying to keep this body nice and even take our thread forward one last time Giving us a nice solid foundation for the silk floss to lay on. I'll trim off that excess silk floss. And we'll get the thread to the eye of the hook. Okay, so in my experience working with the silk floss, I found it best to keep it on the spool and in a bobbin. And this allows me to rotate the bobbin as necessary and I can really adjust 
how it lays when it makes contact with the shank of the hook. And I found that if I manhandle it with my fingers, my fingers are always so dry, it really frays out. You really want a, a nice good foundation. We'll just take our time working that forward. It's going to leave us a nice beautiful black silk floss body. I like it. Alright, we'll just take a couple of locking wraps, securing the silk up front. And trim off our excess. All right, at this point, we can grab our silver wire. We can palmer on our ribbing. Nice, evenly spaced, open spiral, working our way from the rear to the front. And aesthetically, this is kind of, in my opinion, what can make or break a fly is if your wraps are not spot on even. But with a little bit of practice, you too can tie a fly. Alright, so since this is a nice fine wire, I'm just going to take a couple of wraps up front. And this will help prevent the final exposed uh, rib from sliding forward too much. All right, some people helicopter, I like to trim. Too easy, it's a pair of flush cutters. Perfect, at this point we can come in with our beard. Again, I'm using this dyed hen hackle. Just gonna take one one hot green one off. First things first, we'll strip off the fluff. Just get that out of the way. And I'm going for the long barbs on here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a tuff of it with the tips aligned. Strip that off, flip it over. And do it again. So now i got both sides of the feather for the most part. I can grab the stripped butt sections and the tips are more or less aligned. I'm going to tie this in on the back or on the bottom side. For this one I'm going to aim right about midway on the shank of the hook. Midway of that body. I tied a couple of other ones and I think I wasn't, wasn't quite satisfied with the overall length proportion wise like a little bit shorter. Make sure that's nice and even on the bottom side. Looks good. Trim off the excess. Just like that. Now we can grab our squirrel tail and give that a little trim. And we really want to make sure we clean clean the squirrel tail out really good. There's a lot of extra goodiness hanging out underneath. So make sure you really just take an extra second, clean your hair, and it will be much more better. If you have a brush, grab a brush. If you have a comb, grab a comb. Excellent. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take that, put our tips in. And we'll give that a stack here for a quick minute. And I really like the squirrel tail because I really like the white tips at the end. I think it just gives a lot of, a lot of added character. 
Get all the loose ones out. And we'll tie it in. Just about like so, almost about halfway through that far tail. Keeping it sparse. Tight locking wraps. And we'll trim our butts off. And we'll build our head. Nice tight locking wraps. Really got to be careful with the uh, squirrel tail. Again, it can be kind of slippery. And if you're not paying attention, you'll end up with uh, the hair just slipping right off underneath the thread. So let's go ahead and secure it all with a one, two, three whip finish. One, two, three turns. Trim off our tying thread, and of course, we got to come in with some head cement. I am uh, using some Flex Seal on this one, and it's just a little dab of Gluia, little insurance policy. Hold all that together, and we'll just let that spread and soak into the thread. There we go. So there you have it folks. This is what I'm calling the mailman. This is inspired by a friend of mine in Norway. Um, and it's a kind of a inspired by a sea trout pattern. So there you have it folks. Happy tying. And with this one, tight lines. <laughs>